go. That's your problem. Big old root. Big old root. through the base of the wall, then out. It's amazing. It's amazing. Finds any little crack. Amazing. Right. More work. Get a line in. Oh, just a rough one. Just a rough one. So, I think I got the root of the problem. Da -da -la. Look at that. Beast. I was shooting up the ground, going into this one here. So I reckon without that there, um, it's gonna help it. But to be honest with you, this tree is younger than the wall. Why would you plant the tree next to a wall? I don't know. I think on this one, to be honest with you, it's not about like the roots sort of growing into the wall, making it move, etc. I think it's more the roots, they've gone under the wall and every time a little bit of wind touches this tree, it's just moving it. So obviously you imagine like that tree, do, 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 when that moves and then the wall there, it's the roots obviously in the wind and stuff. So it's not like, you know what I mean? The, root, the roots growing into it, uh, which is quite a common cause, especially things like, like ivy and that it is, actually sort of you know the roots moving so obviously all we can really do on situations like this is obviously cut go down a bit deeper with the foundations but actually cut out all of the uh roots the tree should be fine it shouldn't affect the tree at all because you know new ones will grow and stuff and hopefully if we go down nice and deep and keep the foundations lovely and tight um you know it, they always find a way anyway you know you, you can only do what you can do like so uh I think with this one especially, um, yeah, we're gonna have to go down quite deep, um, get a few of the bigger stones in. It is just starting to rain, so uh, that's great. Um, so yeah, just literally keep going. I just wanna try and get a good base in now, flatten it all off, and then once we get building, it's lovely, lovely stone, this. Um, really good stone. But uh, I think for a minute, like I say, you need to sort of really dig down, cut all these off, go really wide. Anyway, let's crack on with this foundation. Hopefully this rain stops and uh, yeah, like I say, nice big stones, tails in, lovely jubbly. Obviously it's got my line set up. So I'll just build just a bit wider than the line. But first of all, get these roots out, dig down, like I say, probably go down like another 150 or whatever, just because we've got some big, big stones and I've got unlimited stone here. So uh, if we have to build a bit deeper, we do, you know what I mean? It's better to be safe, but like I say, really, Till this tree goes, uh, you've always got a risk, really. But uh, you know, that's the beautiful thing about dry stone walls. Righty, we've got a good base in. Um, I just spent a bit of time trying to pick out the biggest stones. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but it is just spitting but we did get a bit of rain earlier, luckily because of this tree. So that's a, a positive of this tree. Um, it is giving me a bit of shielding, but you know, it's not too bad to be honest. That's the only thing when you do dry stone walls, uh, especially for a job, you've got no excuse, you just got to get wet. But uh, anyway, so with regard to the foundation, um, I don't see these ones here. We went obviously dug right down, um, cleared all the roots, um, and then like, like I just said, I've just picked out the biggest, longest sort of tail stones. Um, they're obviously known as foundation stones, whatever you want to call them. Basically, any dry stone wall, really, it should be the biggest stone at the bottom, uh, the smallest stone on top. Meaning, um, obviously, the bigger, the flatter the sort of stone, the more I would use that for a base stone or a foundation stone, whatever. The stone that goes at the bottom always wants to be basically the biggest and the flattest. So what I've done, I've just gone through my pile, uh, picked up the biggest, uh, gone down all the way to the end. Um, you can see that's the level I was at. Down here, we're about, you know, about 150. Um, like I say, I just went down. There was no more signs of roots. Um, 
this has got a really good foundation on it so there was actually stone on the bottom it, i didn't just hit mud um it, there was still stone obviously going down like so i've just sort of stopped at a nice comfortable spot um where it was obviously flat and obviously i was still probably about 250 250 mil underground um, and then yeah like i say whacked in the big flat stones um all tailwind um meaning was a good example i've noticed on this wall there's a few stones which um have been laid like on the face on the on the longest side which is obviously not what you really want to do well you don't want to do it really especially dry stone um you can get away with it if you're using you know mortar like lime cement whatever um but obviously when laying dry stone as you can see there that's been used as the face um hey nay horsey whereas obviously what you want is this side as the face <laughs> meaning obviously the tail which is obviously the longest point at the back wants to be going into the wall like so um it's just for strength purposes basically um because at the end of the day if you have it like that and you build all your wall like that you're basically just building a single faced wall whereas if you build it like tails in it's just a lot stronger imagine putting two bits of wood into a wall and you put one in further than the other and then you stood on the ends pretty much i'd put money on it the one that has more wood sticking out of the wall if you stand on it stand on both that one's going to snap before the other one if you know what i mean so it's the same sort of difference it's not a perfect example but the more stone solid stone you have going into the wall it just when it just with the pressure and the weight and stuff it's just a lot stronger um basically but yeah so always tails in with every stone never like that always like that and then always cross your joints that's just moved oh. always cross your joints so meaning when you want to lay, you don't want to be laying, let's get a smaller stone because beating up the wall. You don't want to lay like that. Um, <laughs> always the way, isn't it? You don't want to lay like that, meaning obviously the joints are like in a line. You always want to be crossing them. Um, it just, because it distributes the weight between the stones. So basically, if you can, uh, the only time you might do is obviously if you've got two small stones. I have a three stone rule. So basically there shouldn't be three stones stacked up on each other like that. You know, you can get away with two and then obviously cross it, but obviously you, you never want more than three. It's called like a, you know, running joint, zip line, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, all tail stones in and then at the back, I've just hearted it. If a dry stone wall doesn't have hearting and it isn't well hearted, it is just going to fall down. Basically, you're just reducing all that space. The less air gaps, the less gaps and space within the whole of the wall, the better. So if you tightly pack it and tightly heart a wall, you, and you've got the tail stones and you've got weight at the bottom just them simple factors really everyone builds walls differently but at the end of the day as long as you've got that good heart in you've got tail stones in you've got your big stone at the bottom it's just basically like sort of you know um it's a lot simpler than i think people think you know it does differ when you've got bad stone um you know when you've got lovely big stone and everything's flat obviously that's the job done because really if you've got flat stone it is literally like you know makes the job a lot easier whereas um when you've got bobbly stone that's when you know the whole point of stone dressing and basically meaning you're just shaping the stone you're, you're sort of just dressing up the stone to make it flatter um but yes anyway we'll crack on just keep going like i am like i say just always keeping it nice and flat always trying to keep the courses which are like the layers of stone keeping them flat like I say avoid the cross joints just keep everything crossing over basically distribute the weight within the wall continuously. Um, like I say, it's quite hard doing repairs because obviously you are knitting in to other bits of wall. And as you can see on this one, quite damaged bits of wall. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, as long as you just keep the main factors of, you know, big stones, tail stones in, nice, tightly packed and hearted. Just them sort of, you know, just them simple factors really, you'll get on farm with dry stone. Anyway, let's stop talking because I need to get this done. I've been uh, playing around with them roots for a lot longer than I should have. And uh, yeah, let's crack on and build some wool. Lovely jubbly. Oh, let's put you on. Oh, the rain's making everything go muddy. We don't want mud. Right, let's see what you look like. Oh, hello. Beautiful.
Fill every gap. Make no gap. Always stand on your work. That's how I was taught. Always stand. Any movement. Change it or peg it. Alright, let's help the back up a little bit. Get some big ones in. Even the heart in. When you're putting the heart in, just make sure they don't move. So sort of heart the heart in, if you know what I mean. If that makes sense. Any dry stone wall, to be honest, yeah, well, that I build, etc., um, always batter. Meaning, never build your wall straight up to like a level. If that was level, you want to be at least like that. There is ratios you can follow. Oh. Always get rid of mud. what you can anyway. Square it up. To be honest with you, I think, uh, well, try not to worry too much about, as long as you follow the factors of obviously no cross joints, etc. I think the wall will naturally just look good. I don't think you should worry too much about Especially if you're doing it at home or whatever. If you actually walk, if you do stone walling for a job, yeah, that's different. But if you're literally just building a wall at home, I think uh, just concentrate on the, you know, the structural side. And I think the look just follows, to be honest. Yeah. Peg it. Oh, just hear that? See that? It's a little rocker. Again there. Uh... Hey. Oh, hello. Oh, just a little bit bigger. Perfect size though. Bit bigger. Hey hey. Problem now, it's rain, it's just so muddy. Go that way. It's literally been raining all day and I'm not even wet. Not even wet yet. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get this little bit in here. Oop. And then uh, from this stone here, I'm gonna use that as like a sort of datum, if you know what I mean. So like. I'll level across into that wall from this stone. Once I've got it flat across the board, it's so much easier because then I can go around and sort of pick out, you know, all the Zaki same depth stone and then literally just lay them beautiful. It's just a lot easier. It just sort of takes a bit of time really getting it flat. But once you are flat, lovely jubbly, you know what I mean? Thank you, mate. I'm just gonna... Useful little sausage. All right, let's try you. Let's try you. You've been waiting patiently. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, hello. Saw that face out. Played around with him too much. Actually, no, he's all right, he's all right. Don't panic, he's fine. Nice. Nice, need a little bit of a peggy wag in.
that you've got to watch out for when you've got muddy heart in. So when you push the heart in, in if any mud sort of splurts off or whatever, you then get movement. Oh, I've been left with a little... So you didn't see that. That's what you don't really want them, to be honest, yeah? You want to try and keep it, you know, big stone. But sometimes it happens. You've got a bit of a small area here. It's always nice to sort of spread out your stone and organise it into small, medium and large and that. But here I can't. I'm sort of just sat still. and I, I, I can't move anyway, you know what I mean? I'm trapped. Oh! So what do you. I meant to do that. Right, well, Connor, I'm spending too much time with one stone here. Oh, hello, you're beautiful, aren't you? Let me get a big one in here. What's the height of that? He's beautiful, isn't he? You're beautiful. Turn that ridge off. Harder up, harder then. You take my heart. Oh, that fits a dream. Beautiful. what you want. A bit like building a wall with Lego bricks like that. Do you know what I see that a lot actually on the wallers, especially up north. The old big stone for beauty. I can't say much more this is a little treat. Yes. Beautiful. Let's get you packed up now. I know I said I'm gonna level off that but I like a little central stone. I saw the opportunity and I'm going to take it. I like it, I like it. I'm going to lean forward really. Not too far forward. Whack it, beautiful. Sometimes you just gotta give it a whack. He says. Well, okay, he's not can't escape. Oh no, I've moved that one now. I'll just put it like that. Hey, that's what you want. He can't fall out. So the thing sometimes putting small bits in like that, you know, when you build your wall like you, you should not be able to take out any stone, uh, basically. What the hell's that? Oh, what's that? 
So basically you should be able to sort of pull out any stone. So that's a good little test, especially when it's got a stone on top. Do you know what I mean? Um, Cause that means it's not, the weight's not distributed again. That word of the day, weight distribution. Anyway, I am gonna have a slurp of coffee and, uh, oh, it's a bit high, isn't he? Yeah, see what this afternoon brings. Do stand test. Lovely. Righty. Go have a slurp, crack on this afternoon, see how much we can get up. Right, let's go. Lovely jubbly cheeky little chunk in there just under about a quarter because uh, the wall's stepping down there so yeah just under a quarter done obviously I had to play around with the uh, root but uh, like I say they are all out now uh, on this section anyway you just don't know really because it's such an established tree the roots could be here there and everywhere but uh, it's all we can do really without obviously ripping the a the wall down and obviously ripping the tree out and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, well deserved to stay there. Do you know what I mean? It's always the risk, like I say, trees and walls do not mix well. But anyway, I'm going to probably carry on hearting for a little bit um, just to get this flat. So then tomorrow I can come in and it is just literally boss mode building, baby. And uh, we can see what damage we can get done. But no, it's all going good. It is all going good. Like I say, it's got fill in some of the gaps and uh, yeah, crack on with it tomorrow. But overall nice little day it's nice to be back on the dry stone feels like it's been a long time really but uh no i've enjoyed it really enjoyed it <laughs> it looks tidy from here doesn't it but uh let's get tidied up and uh roll on tomorrow thank you for watching take care and i will see you in a bit